Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is linear algebra. Today I want to explain what is a quotient. Strictly speaking, I will explain what is a quotient vector space because we're doing linear algebra and everything is linearized. But um, there's this main idea which I want to explain basically. And this is how in mathematics we like to identify information. And not just in mathematics, it's just a general concept all of us do every day. Um, just, there's just too much information outside there. And in some sense, you declare things to be equal. And the linear version of this is just a quotient vector space. Okay, so let's just jump right into it. Um, so the main idea, really the idea of quotients that I want to explain is as follows. So in general, you would do something like we have some, some type of object Right, an X, Y, Z object, whatever it is. If it's a vector space, it's a vector space. If it's a group, it's a group, whatever, you know. And you take some kind of subobject. So my V and my W, V and W. And you want to take a quotient and it's classical notation is just using kind of this fraction notation, V mod W. That's how you, that's how you say it, V modulo W. Uh, w. Um, but it, it's really just V divided by W in some sense. And what would be the wish list? Okay, um, general philosophy is whatever type you start with, you, that's the type you want to end with. So um, V mod W should be of the same type. If it was a vector space before, it should be a vector space afterwards. If it was a group before, it should be a group afterwards. If it was a whatever before at X, Y, Z, it should be at X, Y, Z afterwards. Um, and kind of the main idea, and that's what we will see in a very explicit example, actually two very explicit examples, is the W should be completely trivial in V mod W. We kind of have divided by W. W is trivial. Everything contained in W, all the information contained in W is gone in V tangent, uh, in V modulo W. Um, and because we are doing some linear algebra or in some sense, or oh, this is actually true in general, but in some sense, things are now equal if and only if they differ by W, because W is trivial, right? So um, if X equals Y, then this is the same as saying, so X equals Y, let's just say X equals Y, it's the same as saying X minus Y is zero, because zero is kind of the trivial information. But if zero is now the, all of W, right, then x equals y if they differ by things in w. That's all, that's the whole idea, just replace zero by w. And this, okay, this will be, the, well, I would explain the linear version of this, of course, because linear algebra, right, we are doing linear algebra, but this is a very general concept, and you see this every day, you ju just do this every day. Here's an example. So you have much more information on the left hand side right you just have let, let, let's say you you already have identified some information you um identify people according to their age but let's say you're running a running a kind of a website or whatever uh so you want to sell something and it, it's given by dividing the people further by age so if they are too young well you don't have a package for them they drop out um if they are a certain age group, you are completely identify this age group uh, and you have a package for them. If they are another certain age group, you identify these ages and you have another package for them and so on. Yeah. That is the whole idea. Um, and you just want a linear version of this, right? So this is, on the right-hand side is a quotient. On the left-hand side is original information. And of course the quotient has way fewer information. I can't distinguish anymore between someone who is whatever, uh, 30 or 40. I, I, I just can't distinguish them anymore. But you have lost information. But you also have simplified the problem in some sense. And that's why the whole notion of, of quotient of quotients is so important. OK, that's just what I want to keep you in mind. A quotient identifies information. And let's see the linear version of this. And really, let's, let's do it very slowly, OK? So I start with 
a line, my W here, my W here is just this line. It's, it's a line through the point one, one. It is a diagonal, of course. And I should learn how to draw. Um, so this is a line in R2, as you can see. And we want to say everything on this line is trivial. Okay, so we want to co collapse all of W to a point. So W should become zero. All of W is equal. It's a point, it's collapsed to a point. And if you remember my X minus Y equals zero, and now zero is W, then two things should be equal if they differ by W. So let's have a look. So here I have my vectors um, V, and well, W is maybe a bad notation, but I have my vectors V and W here. And they lie on this, on this hyperplane here, uh, on this line, parallel to W. And if you do your, your, the usual algebra, well, the sum will be somewhere out here, but the difference, how do you take the difference? Well, you, for example, flip W, so here's minus W, and then takes the usual, well, rectangular uh, square-like shape, right? Here is V minus W. And you observe that V minus W actually lies on W. So everything, and well, of course my vectors V and W were pretty much arbitrary on this line parallel to w, w. So everything on this line differs by an element of W. So if you take this philosophy into account, then they should be equal. And yes, that's how V modulo W works. So V modulo W, all the points on it are the, the lines parallel, so this one, this one, this one, and so on. The lines parallel to, to W, with W itself being the zero element. Or if you want to collect everything, it's, it, it's like the, um, the line orthogonal to W. So all I have done on this slide is I've identified W to a point and I looked at what happens if my right notion of my, my proposed notion of being equal is if things differ by W. And it turns out that I get a new space whose points, and that's maybe a bit confusing, but the points of the new space are the lines parallel to W. Okay, and this is really how it works. And you can do this in in general, in any dimension. The only thing that changes is, so here's a version of W in, uh, in R3. And now, well, you, you, you basically have the same, the same picture, just, just in R3. So things differ if they uh, differ by an element of W. Uh, things are equal if they differ by an element of W. Um, so if V minus W is in W, and it turns out that now V modulo W, this is a green bit here, is, is you get identified with a, uh, with a two dimensional space, orthogonal to W. Why? Well, basically we can place this uh, a game of lines parallel to W in two directions. Right? In, in the plane, there was only one direction to go, um, but in, in three space, I have two Linear, linearly independent directions. And that's why I end up with the plane. Observe that, um, well, what, that's what I said, lines parallel to W are points and the dimension is one of the whole space itself because it's just a line orthogonal to W. And here, um, it, it's still the, the case that lines parallel to W are the points but now you have two, two linearly dependent directions, right? So the dimension of this whole space is two. And this is just how it works in general. So um, the dimension of V modulo W will always be V minus W. It's, it's, it's exactly what remains if you take out W. So the, the orthogonal, the thing orthogonal to it. Here W is one dimensional. Uh, well, I'm, you know, I'm in R3, so this guy should be two dimensional. One. One, two, three, right? So this is really how it works in that one. It's maybe a bit hard to imagine if you're in uh, dimension 504, but that's why we write down everything algebraically, right? Um, and, and really what it is, is the class of W 
that's what you write here. Sometimes some people like to write that. So something like this. This is the image of W in V mod W is, is zero actually in, in V mod W. And as I said, what I said is V equals W if and only if they differ by an element in W. And the formal construction is, well, you take equivalence classes and you, uh, and your equivalence relation is exactly, is exactly mimicking this blue, blue thing here. So V is equivalent to W if and only if, or by definition, if V minus W is a W. And, and the usual yoga gives you that this, uh, these operations define a vector space structure. So actually this, this is exactly what I wanted, wanted to have. So those properties all hold basically vector structure. It's really just a linear version of the concept of um, uh, of, 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 of taking quotients of identifying information. Okay. Um, and then you can ask fancier questions. So what happens, uh, for example, for certain shapes like, like my cube here, this purplish cube, uh, whatever a cube. What happens? Um, this is a cube in R3. So what happens if, if I take the quotient? And this is basically the picture you should think of. You have the cube and there's a line that is quotient by W. And you can slide the cube onto V mod W. And you will see actually the cube in some sense becomes a triangle. Ah, green wasn't probably a good idea. Uh, maybe blue becomes a triangle in V mod W. So you, you collapse the cube to basically its shadow. If you, if you look at it from, from exactly the side here I've, I've illustrated, it, it looks like a triangle. So you, you collapse it to a shadow. It, you've lost information. And that's the whole point of course. Okay, but that's it for today. And I hope to see you next time.